Uh, what I might do is just uh, take you back a little bit in time and the, some of the beginnings of the ADA and how it kind of came to be. It didn't just happen overnight. Um, in 1964, we passed the Civil Rights Act that banned discrimination on the basis of, uh, let me see if I get it right, race, color, sex, religion, national origin, not disability. So the way I always kind of put it is, so the ADA was signed in law on January, uh, July 26, 1990, that's the 25th anniversary. If you, say, were a, an African-American, and on July the 25th, you saw an ad in the paper for a job for which you were qualified, and you went down to answer that ad, and the uh, respective employer said, ah, get out of here, I don't hire colored people. You could turn right around, go down to the courthouse door, and the courthouse door was open. If on July 25th you were a person with a disability, you saw an ad for a job for which you were qualified, you rolled your wheelchair down there, and the prospective employer said, get out of here, I don't hire cripples. And you rolled that wheelchair out of there and went down to the courthouse door. The courthouse door was locked. Locked. You had no recourse. Blatant, open discrimination against any person with a disability was not actionable. I mean, and, and not only just in jobs, in eating. If you were a deaf person, went into a restaurant and said, I, you know, I can't hear, I, want, I need an interpreter, they get out of here, they throw you out of there. You had no recourse whatsoever. God forbid if you were a person with cerebral palsy, tried to go in a restaurant to eat or something like that, they'd have had you out in a, in a moment's notice. This happened every single day all over our country. So... Beginning in the 1970s, uh, when I first came to Congress, maybe a little bit, be actually before that, we had the Rehab Act uh, called the Rehabilitation Act 1973. You all heard of Section 504 and 503 of the Rehab Act. So that was even before I got to Congress. But there began a sort of a nascent um, beginning movement uh, to address these problems in a more comprehensive manner. In other words, to put under that broad cloak of civil rights, people with disabilities. My first involvement in disability issues came about, as Nick said, because of my brother Frank, who was deaf. And um, uh, at a young age, he was taken away from his home and his family, taken out to a school where he had to stay for the deaf. And uh, in those days, they called it the School for the Deaf and Dumb. I remember a couple of things my brother said to me in his lifetime. One, he said, you know, I may be deaf, but I'm not dumb. And when he was in school, he, when he finally got into high school, they said, well, uh, which one of these do you want to be when you get out? You can be a baker, a shoe cobbler, or a printer's assistant. My brother said, I don't want to do any of that stuff. <laughs> so they said, okay, you're going to be a baker. He had no choice. So he became a baker. Not really what he wanted to do. He's in this small bake shop in West Des Moines, Iowa. A man comes in in the morning, comes in periodically, sees him, and somehow strikes up some kind of a conversation uh, with my brother. And he asked him how he would liked his job. My brother said, I hate it. This sign, anyway. Yeah, that sign. <laughs> Um, and so the guy said, well, what do you want to do? He said, I, I like to work on machines. I like to work with my hands. I wrote it out for him, wrote it out for him. And so this guy had a small manufacturing plant. His name was Delavan, Mr. Delavan. He employed between 200 and 300 people, and they made jet engine nozzles, nozzles for jet engines. So he told Frank, why don't you come work for me? So Frank left his job at the bakery, went to work for him. They trained him to run this machine that drilled these little holes in jet engine nozzles and stuff. So several months, I found this all, I learned this later. Several months later, Mr. Delavan went to Frank's foreman, his boss, and asked him how Harkin was doing. And the foreman said, oh, he's just, this guy's great. It's amazing. Never makes a mistake. Puts out more parts per hour. Never late for work. Stays a little bit over time to finish a job. It's amazing. Well, Delavan was pretty interested in this. 
So he began to look, try to figure out you know, how, why was he so much more productive than other workers. Finally, it dawned on him. This was a very noisy place. A lot of clanging and banging and people yelling and machines and stuff like that. My brother didn't bother him one bit. He just sat right there and just continued to do his job. This is a true story. Old man Delavan thought, this is, this is interesting. He went out and hired more deaf people. <laughs> now, the first may have been out of the goodness of his heart. From then on, it was helps his bottom line. Most productive workers.